Hi mystery resurfaced here, today I'm going to explain a 2021 German American heist thriller movie called Army of Thieves. A prequel to Army of the Dead, it is the second installment in the Army of the Dead franchise. The film starts with the explanation of a decent locksmith called Hans Wagner, who was once a focused man until his wife and son died tragically. In his aging years, he began to plan a series of power safes, based on Richard Wagner's incredible ring cycle included four operas. He then, named the most secure as the following Rheingold, Valkyrie, Siegfried and Goethe Demering. After finishing the work of art, Hans fabricated a last protected safe, which he used to lock himself away for good. Several attempts have been made to free him from the safe, but, all failed. At last the safe was dropped into the sea, with Hans' dead body still inside. Until now, the area of the safe stay probably the best secret of the safe-cracking world. Back to the film Sebastian, the primary character of the film, is carrying on with an ordinary life as a bank employee in Germany, where he needs to face irritating clients that continue to complain consistently. One day at work, he sees news about a zombie flare-up in Las Vegas. In his extra time, he makes safe-cracking related videos for his YouTube channel. Sadly, every one of his videos have no watchers by any means, however he never gives up. A couple of seconds after the fact, one of his videos gets a watcher and a comment interestingly from an unknown figure who welcomes him to go to an underground safe-cracking competition in Berlin. He however shows up at the location that was mentioned in the comment and says the mystery word to the guard, which is Goethe Demering, the guard gives him access and he shows up at the scene where a several contestants are present and preparing themselves up for the safe cracking competition. The competition starts and every one of the contestant begin to crack the safe before them. While the confused Sebastian simply stands and panics, however, Sebastian manages to crack the safe and continues to the semi-final with three different finalists. The next round starts again and Neo is the first person to crack the second safe. This time, Sebastian is as of now ready and manages to be the second person that cracks the safe, permitting him to continue to the grand final. In the grand final contestants are expected to crack the safe in three minutes or less, or it'll be viewed as a tie. Neo is making a good attempt to crack the safe, while Sebastian continues chatting to divert Neo, who is irritated and advises him to quiet down. Afterwards, Sebastian begins to crack his safe and manages to crack it easily, making him the winner of the competition. He incidentally spots a young lady named Gwen, who is impressed by his safe-cracking ability. Turns out that Gwen is a gifted jewel thief who has been doing her activities since she was a kid. It was six years of age when she managed to steal her first wristwatch. Shockingly, Gwen also had a red notice from Interpol since she was 17. The next day, Sebastian proceeds with his exhausting regular routine, however this time he finally meets and talks to Gwen interestingly while buying coffee. She uncovers that she is the person who put the comment on YouTube and invited him to the competition to see his safe cracking skills. Gwen also flaunts her stealing skill by purposely stealing a wedding ring, a watch and a gun from coffee shop guest. She then, invites Sebastian to be a part of her heist group. At first he hesitate that he is not a criminal and has no involvement with doing as such, however when Gwen makes sense of that they are pursuing the whole ring cycle safes, Sebastian becomes excited because he is Hans diehard fan. Yet uncertain as. The safes are incredibly difficult to solve. Before Gwen leaves, she uncovers that the safes are expected to be decommissioned in 96 hours, meaning that they have exceptionally restricted chance to have the valuable chance to solve the safes. Understanding that this might be the last moment for him to crack the masterpiece, Sebastian chooses to join the group and goes to Gwen's hideout. There Gwen acquaints other colleagues with Sebastian the first is Karina, who's in charge for logistics and as a programmer she guarantees herself. Next, there is Ralph, the skilled accomplice who was formerly functioning as an valet parking driver and is known as the best drifter in town. The last one is Brad Cage, the action hero who claims himself to be the head of the group however denied by Karina. At first, Sebastian is astonished and confused simultaneously on the grounds that the global heisting group only consists of five members including him. Gwen explains that the smaller the size of the group, the harder for them to get caught. The five of them intended to perform three heists across Europe in three days. Their first stop will be Paris, where Rheingold the safe with minimal combinations among other safes, sits in a credit union. 
A minute before the heist, Sebastian abruptly wavers and frenzies since Brad Cage outfitted himself with a gun. Gwen attempts to comfort him by saying the gun is unloaded. Sebastian is the first guy to go into the credit union and straightforwardly go directly to the bathroom. Then Gwen takes the keys from the security guard and comes in as a visitor to see the deposit room. Soon, Karina shows up at the bank to divert the teller. While, Gwen and Sebastian slip into the vault and show up where the safe is kept. Sebastian at last has the chance to perform his safe-cracking abilities with the genuine and testing safe. After explaining the story behind the safe to Gwen, he manages how to settle the riddle effectively, and the safe is opened. They collect the cash from the vault, and afterward escape from the credit union. While Brad diverts the teller, for the second time, the group effectively attempts their heist and escapes undetected. On the opposite side, Delacroix, a fanatical Interpol agent who has been pursuing the team for a really long time after Brad shot him in the ass, tracks down the recording of the heist at the credit union and suspects when screws the guilty party. His colleague, Beatrix, requested the earnestness from pursuing the criminals as there is right now a zombie episode that needs more consideration, however he is now excessively fixated on the thieves and doesn't care about the zombie end times. He sorts out that the group is going to the remaining Bogner safes area and orders the other Interpol officials to prepare. As the team celebrates after the Paris heist, Karina asks Sebastian to make out that he declines as he creates affections for Gwen secretly. Which frustrates Karina later on the evening, Karina uncovers to Sebastian that Brad's real name is Alexis, and she is involved with him. After that, Sebastian goes through the night with her discussing their previous life and the location of Gerter Demering's sowing jealousy in Brad. The next day, the team shows up at Prague. Where the Valkyrie safe is kept in the NPIB bank, Sebastian and Gwen will slip into the bank, while Karina will help them from the van. Sebastian manages to gain access to a few rooms undetected lastly arrived at the elevator, where the two of them dive to the underground and show up at the vault. Upon appearance, they meet with two guards, and Gwen manages to overcome the two of them with her combative techniques as expected prior to cracking the safe. Sebastian clarifies the story behind the safe for Gwen. Tragically, a bank security official, recognizes Sebastian's moment and becomes suspicious of his peculiar vanishing in the CCTV they then, chose to set off the soft lockdown alert making Brad send off Plan B and starts outfitting himself with weapons and a peculiar cover. He gets into the bank and takes out a few safety officers with sedative darts. He also arranges the bank benefactors to the center of the room while encouraging the staff to fill a sack with cash. On the opposite side, Delacroix and his group are sitting tight for the thieves' movement, however nothing occurs. They choose to get into the bank, just to figure out that they have been holding up in wrong bank, as the safe had been moved until, back to the vault Sebastian fails at the first attempt, gambling with it to be locked for eternity. Fortunately, he at last manages to crack out the riddle and the safe, moving a portion of the cash to their bags, and because the chaos caused by Brad, Sebastian and Gwen can escape from the vault, while leaving Brad is shot in the shoulder by a safety officer, however manages to get once again into the van. Ralph starts their escape Gwen effectively hops into the van with Brad's help when it's Sebastian's move, Brad purposely tosses him back to the road, driving him to get away from the pursuit without anyone else. He manages to take a bicycle and uses it to escape from the police. Sebastian at last can arrive at a train and leaves with it. Gwen is extremely furious and disheartened with Brad's past activity, despite the fact that they had concurred already to discard Sebastian after three heists are finished. She orders Ralph to stop the van and chooses to leave the van in the high steam. Karina also joins her and the two of them chose to go to Munich and rejoin with Sebastian. The discouraged Sebastian is shocked when he tracks down Karina and Gwen had been sitting tight for him in the house. They apologize, and Gwen urges him to proceed with the heist. After a few empowering words, he at last chooses to join Karina and Gwen again to continue to their final heist. They head to Street Moritz. It's in the same place as the third safe found. While Delacroix and his group also present in the town, this time the Interpol group is more ready and sure on the grounds that one of their member manages to break into Sebastian's telephone line and uncovers their plan. The Interpol group gets into the casino. Just to figure out that they are tricked as the safe has been moved earlier because they reached the casino staff. Which makes Delacroix confused, incidentally, eight hours sooner. 
Karina imitated an Interpol agent and reached the manager of the casino where Siegfried is kept, informing them that the safe may be attacked. Therefore, the casino consented to reschedule the shipment by 30 minutes to avoid any arranged assaults. Sebastian and Gwen hijack the heavily armed truck and get the actual vault, while Karina deliberately records a radio transmission that persuaded the Interpol that the pickup time was still on time. Sebastian deals with the vault as Gwen drives them towards their escape. Tragically, Brad and Raffle, also holding up at the casino and figured out how to detect Gwen's location through her phone GPS, mindful of the danger, Karina emerges from the van and attempts to stop them, yet she promptly is encircled by Interpol agents and captured. Fortunately, she figures out how to inform Gwen. Beatrix persuades her to let them know Gwen's escape plan, permitting the Interpol to pursue them. Quick version, Sebastian figures manages to crack the safe lock and Gwen chooses to pull the truck over to gather all the cash inside the vault. Sadly, Brad and Ralph show up, and Brad threatens to use his gun on the pair turns out that Gwen had proactively taken out the firing pin from Brad's gun. She turns the table as she is also outfitted with a firearm, handcuffing both Brad and Ralph to the truck for Interpol to find prior to leaving with Sebastian. The pair shows up at the dock not long prior to departing on a boat. They are caught by Delacroix, who points his gun towards them. Gwen points her gun back at the Interpol agent and after some negotiations, she at last chooses to forfeit herself to be captured by him as she is what he needed. Delacroix hesitantly concurs and captured Gwen. While Sebastian escapes with a boat, he finds a passport prepared by Karina and travels to the United States. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.